What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Got a stream VOD of our Wednesday night Full Grip Games shop tournament here. Done my best to cut it up into uh, the most enjoyable products that I can for you all today. So I hope you all enjoy. Check it out. Four rounds, 13 players at the Full Grip Games tournament tonight. Gonna be getting that up and going here. Let's see. We got... I. I don't know. Let's see. I don't know if I got these guys on the right side of the table. It's at times very difficult to judge a player based on their hands. So, anyways, here we go. We got Wheel Mantho in the house and Justin Bookter. I'm hoping that I judged their hands correctly and I'm able to tell who is who here. But Wheel Mantho is going to be playing that Buzz Shrine deck that he was showing off last week here and did pretty well with. Justin Bookter is a longtime friend of mine and a world's caliber player himself. It's crazy about our local league, honestly. We got so many like world's qualifiers and things like that showing up all the time here to play on Wednesday nights at Full Grip Games. Awesome stuff. One of the coolest leagues I've honestly ever been a part of. So, Will Mantho versus Justin Bookter. Interesting matchup. I think that if Lost March just behaves, and does everything it's supposed to do and sets up. Lost March should be able to win this matchup pretty decently, honestly. I think the jump bluff resists fighting, right? So it's pretty tough for Will to be able to stream knockouts on the jump bluffs, right? Because the jump bluffs have 70 hit points. They resist fighting. Oh, thank you, Nate Dog, for the sub. Appreciate it. Oh, and we see that beautiful Pikachu animation is back. So shout out to Wimpo Squirrel for that. Um, but thank you, Nate Dog, with that Twitch Prime sub. You the man, Nate Dog. So uh, I do think that the favor should go to Justin in this matchup. That's just my personal prediction. But it could go either way. We do know that Lost March is a deck that tends to be pretty temperamental. Uh, it can have some consistency issues and, ooh, Justin accidentally revealing a few cards there. <laughs> uh, and if Justin has to put down a Tapu Lele or a Pokemon GX in this matchup, that could be pretty devastating for him because Will will be able to take advantage of that and surely will be able to take a knockout. Now, Will is coming off a little bit of a rough weekend. Sorry to expose you, Will, but Will uh, had quite the weekend on New Year's, uh, New Year's weekend. We did three drafts with Will, three cube drafts, and Will went 0 and 9 in our cube draft scenario. Granted, he's drafting with some players that are pretty good, right? He's drafting with some players that are pretty good, but 0 and 9, he went 0 3 at all three cube drafts, and he lost every game of Key Forge that he played this weekend. So, Will is looking for a win. He desperately wants a win under his belt. I think if I had to say what Will's track record is, he's probably like 0 and 12 in his last 12 card games played. So he's desperately looking for a win today. And I think that just any sort of victory will probably, you know, probably be a big dub for Will. So he's trying to dig himself out of this, uh, out of this hole that he's in. Unfortunately, he's playing against a very good player here, Justin Bookter, with a very good deck, Lost March. So should be close. I do think that Will does play Weavile in his deck, so that should help. Though, I guess there's not really a whole lot of Pokemon in the Lost March deck that have abilities. Just um, just the Oranguru, maybe a Marshadow, and possibly Skiplooms. But I imagine the Skiplooms will probably just uh, Floral Path into the sky to turn into Jump Luffs as soon as they can. So I think the real deciding factor is just going to be how well does Justin's deck set up? And does Justin have to put a Pokemon GX into play? I do see a double colorless energy in Justin's hand. So he has that going for him, but uh, no clues as to what his starters look like. Look like players are still just waiting for the judge to get things started here. 
And it does feel refreshing, not gonna lie. It feels refreshing to be commentating on some real life Pokemon cards because uh, I'm sure that our real life Pokemon cards will probably have less technical issues than PTCGO has been having in the last 48 hours. PTCGO was a mess this morning trying to play that. I kept getting booted from games. Uh, I was having things just get grayed out uh, on me. It was a complete mess, but uh, it's fine. We got one game in this morning. If you guys caught the uh, <laughs> if you caught the the gameplay this morning, I was able to play one game before I just eventually got eternally booted. Right, nine out of ten. I agree. It is uh, looking rough. Looks like both players are going to shake hands here. Will is starting off. That is great for him. Definitely wants to go first if he can. He's got Trubbish in the active position, Sneasel, and an Orangaroo on the bench. He will slap that rainbow energy there onto the Trubbish. Very good. And Justin starts the Tapu Lele. That's just what I was saying. Literally, that is the last thing Justin wanted to start. That is really, really tough for him. Starting that Tapu Lele could just decide the match. Going second and starting Tapu Lele, that's devastating. That is about as bad as it gets for Lost March. If there was just one thing that needed to not happen, it was that. Uh, I mean, Justin could maybe come back from this if he at least went first. But going second and starting Tapu Lele might just be too bad to come back from. Will has got excellent board position here. He's got uh, two Trubbish, Sneasel, Buzzwool, Orangaroo, everything he could possibly want, and a Choice Band, which I agree. Putting it on the active Trubbish, very good there. Justin slapping that DCE down, and he knows that uh, he is going to have to probably energy drive that or he's going to retreat. I uh, could see an energy drive, though only doing 60 damage is like super... Actually, no, that's super relevant. I don't know. Oh, Will just let that Trubbish get knocked out. Oh, what is he doing? I was going to say he's going to be short, but no, the 10 damage from Rainbow with the DCE. Justin's going to take a turn one knockout against Will with a let loose here. So Will potentially should have put that Rainbow anywhere else than on that active <laughs> Trubbish there. <laughs> Justin uh, Loki starts probably the best starter he could to take a knockout on the Trubbish. Uh, I think a Natu would have been preferred, but Tapu Lele is gonna take that turn one knockout against Will, and I'm sure Will is not excited about that. Justin could very well hang in the match uh, with that. So, great balls here. Has got a skip loom in his hand for the next turn, and we'll take the turn one knockout. The choice band's gone, the rainbow energy's gone, and that Trubbish is gone. Oh, Will, why did it have to be like that, my man? That is just so tough. Probably should have let that rainbow energy just sit on anyone else. Will is going to promote the buzz wool here, stabilize his board a little bit, and just get some damage down. I think he realizes that the buzzwool is just not going to be very useful after, you know, after the sledgehammer turn, the buzzwools are going to be pretty much dead. So he will gladly, is he failing a nest ball? Why is Will failing a nest ball? I guess he's got basics in hand and wants to kind of get his hand thinned out. He's got the ditto, but this is like really bad because he's, promoted the buzzwool here, but oh, this is so bad. Will, Will has nothing in his hand. Oh my goodness. He promoted the buzzwool, and that means he will not be able to use the the shrine to, I mean, his four prize turn. So his sledgehammer turn, if this thing ends up going down, it's just going to be a wash. So we thought that, uh, you know, we thought that maybe, you know, Will was a shoe in for being favored in this matchup, but we see his hand is just rescue stretcher, escape rope, and, uh, and another shrine. That's it. So his hand is jammed. He's got not much else going on. Uh, to be fair, there wasn't much he was going to be able to do this turn anyway even if his Trubbish didn't get knocked out, but still giving Justin that early prize advantage is pretty tough here. So uh, I think Will promoting the Buzzwell is like, well, at least Tapu Lele can't really 
knock out the buzzwall, right? So the tap <laughs> is at least going to have to retreat into a lost marcher. But Will is going to forfeit his, uh, you know, his his turn here. Uh, it was four prize turn. I guess he does have the rescue stretcher and the escape rope in his hand. So he actually doesn't. He will get to use his big sledgehammer, even if this buzzwall does go down. So he will get to rescue stretcher, then escape rope the buzzwall back out into the active position. So I guess knowing his hand, I, I can agree with this line of play and I like it here. That's totally fine. It just is a little bit rough, no matter which way you look at it here. There's no way Will wants to go down to Justin having four prizes remaining before he even gets to take one. Though Will does have a, um, does have the Lele to work with, Justin just has to opt to hit into the buzz wall. It looks like Justin did not have enough loss marchers in the loss zone in order to knock out Will's buzz wall. So what did Will get off the top here? He's just gonna go rescue stretcher to shuffle back into the deck. He's gonna try to grind a little bit further and see if he can find himself an energy, maybe a unit energy or a rainbow or something like that in order to be able to at least kind of expedite the death of this Tapu Lele here. He needs something going on. He does not want to play this escape rope, I don't think, though he could promote the Trash Lance Garbodor. It's an option. So he's kind of weighing that here. He's just going to go for the one, and it's a will. What is it, Will? It's a choice band. That's it. It's just a choice band, and he's just going to pass. So the choice band goes on to the active buzz wall, uh, and that's it. His hand is now escape rope and shrine. So I'm interested as to why Will decided to go and keep the uh, escape rope. I guess he wants to save the trash lance Garbodor for later, and I definitely understand that because he... Um, knows that that's going to be his big hitter later on in the game and someone who could just guaranteed knock out jump bluffs and stuff like that. But giving Justin another turn here, I feel like is really bad. So he could have probably escape roped into the Trash Lance Garbodor and just said, you know what, I need to hit an energy here in order to attack. Um, Sasha, I'm not exactly sure why Will is committing all these choice bands. He knows that Justin is not going to reset his hand. He knows that that choice band can be, can be committed at any point in time. There's literally no point in putting that choice band down into, into play. Just none at all. He could just hang on to that and use it next turn because Justin will not use a Marshadow. I can almost guarantee the fact that Justin's not going to use a Marshadow at this point. Right. Um, so... I think that, you know, he probably could have just saved that choice band for next turn because if it goes down, then it's just like a turn wasted. So I'm not exactly sure, but we'll uh, we'll end up seeing here. Looks like Justin's going to retreat into the jump bluff. Go down to four prizes. Justin is in the lead by a substantial clip at this point. And now Will ends up promoting the Trash Lance Garbodor anyway. So I think... That is, uh, I think he probably just should have played the <laughs> escape rope last turn. And okay, we do see Will's got the escape rope to get his buzzwell back into the active. This is not bad. So if he could just hit an energy here, he's going to be fine hitting four, his four prize sledgehammer turn. But he only gets to instruct for two. And he's got the rainbow. Okay, so he's not like that far gone. But it's still not good, right? Still just not great. Uh, and he's got the Guzma. Okay, so that's nice. At least he will take uh, the knockout on the jump bluff, but still, you know, a little confused as to why he opted to go with the Garbodor instead of the Buzzwell, considering that Justin's on his four prize turn. My guess is that Will is probably just so tilted by the fact that he has been drawing so poorly that he might not have thought about it. I think saving the buzzwall on the bench seems kind of pointless since that buzzwall is just going to be doing far less damage here going forward. I guess Will does know that he's got a limited amount of energy in his deck and that he needs to take the opportunity to attack with rainbow energy in order, you know, to play that onto his uh play that onto his Garbodors, but still a little bit interesting, you know, a little bit um, you know, just a little bit interesting. I'm not exactly sure why he chose the Garbodor route here instead of the Sledgehammer, but 
It's fine. I know uh, for one, just uh, you know, playing uh, Buzzwool, I do miss the sledgehammer all the time. It happens. Sometimes you don't see it. You're just kind of wrapped up in your head and not thinking about it and just trying to trying to take a knock out any other way and you forget about your sledgehammer turn sometimes. But maybe Will has his reason and maybe I'll get to talk to him about that a little bit later to ask. Justin will take the knockout here. Will promotes his Sneasel. He's got a Slugma in hand as well as a unit energy and a Macargo. So he needs a Weavile, but I think I do see an Ultra Ball. He'll evolve, it's not a, yes, he does have a Slug in his hand, I think. It's also a Macargo, but also a Slug. I think he'll choose to evolve into Macargo, and I like that. Though, I really think Will's got himself in just a tough spot here, considering that he he attacked with the Garbodor instead of the Buzzwell. I think the Garbodor, you know, needed to be saved for later in the game because he's going to start to run out of relevant attackers and that Buzzwell is just going to sit there on the bench not doing anything. So that's just my opinion. It's my hot take. Will will Ultra Ball away, I think, a Guzma and a Slugma there and go find himself. I think now he's just, you know, he's got to build up another Garbodor. So we see, you know, I think he could have avoided all of that if he had just, you know, used the sledgehammer turn on the four prize turn. But it's fine. This is where we're at right now, and I think Will's just got to play it out. So he is going to use Smooth Over, presumably to stack a Weavile on top of the deck, and then use Orangaroo's Instruct in order to draw into it. Justin's just going to tap. These guys are friends. They know, uh, you know, the stakes are not that high. They, are, <laughs> they know that they're not going to... Uh, we're doing any shady business on camera here. So, uh, Justin looks like he doesn't really have much. That or he has a Guzma in hand because he's promoting the Mars Shadow. So, that could be pretty telling. If Justin doesn't have a follow up attack here, then he could be in some trouble. See Justin play Apricorn Maker. That is an interesting card to have in the list. Could go for Ultra Ball, could go for Great Ball here just to try and bring out some other attackers. I think probably Great Ball, Nest Ball. Uh, maybe you want to get the, the Grass with the Nest Ball, get the Skip Loom with the Great Ball. But he might not be able to get the attacker into the active. That's a valid concern. Unless he's got, um, unless he's got a Guzma or a Switch, which I don't think the most Lost March lists are playing Switch. So I'm thinking that Justin might have to just forfeit a turn of attacking here, which could be huge for Will. This is going to help turn the tides of the game. Unless Justin's just like gripping a Guzma and kind of just playing us all here, uh, then I don't think that he, he has it. All right, so Justin's going to play Great Ball. Look at the top seven. It's going to pick that skip loom and then presumably just go right back into the deck with floral path away to the sky to get a jump bluff there. So he'll evolve. Does he have the jump bluff in deck? He's going to use the net ball there. Hopefully he does not attach that grass before he floral paths in the sky. I don't know if he actually knows these interactions here. Uh, yes, he does. Very good. Okay, excellent. So <laughs> that, is, uh, that is very good. I know Justin hasn't... Uh, has taken a few months off, so just had to make sure that he did know to save the grass. Yes, please don't attach the grass to the skip bloom. That would be bad. All right, so we get the grass onto the jump bluff. And does he have the Guzma? Did he have it all along here? Uh, see, it looks like he does have Guzma. All right, so he's going to bring up, or a switch. Okay, it looks like a switch. It was because uh, Will is not switching. Oh, yes, he is. All right, no, he isn't. Okay, must be a switch. It's off camera, so excuse me, guys. I can't actually see. I'm just trying to judge what it was played based on the, the actions there. So Justin did have a switch. Yes, I could see it now in the discard. There's apparently a switch in this Lost March deck. So very interesting. Justin's going to go down to two prizes remaining, and Will has to dig himself out of this hole. That Lele is slowly losing health, which is very good. And Justin does not have a backup uh, Lost Marcher here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Fireflame. Yes, he, uh, he already played the Apricorn Maker, so it was going to have to be a switch the whole time. So very good. I just totally forgot about that. 
But yes, we do have Will here, uh, who could be in a favorable position if Justin can't pull that off again. He would need a Lost Marcher and also a Switch or a Guzma in order to get uh, a new Lost Marcher into the active. So I think that Justin could just lose the game here, kind of at the finish line, fumbling at the one yard line. Uh, oh no, he's got it just in hand, the Natu and the DCE. That makes me think that playing the DCE down, he's just got to have a way to get that thing into the active position. But then does Justin have another backup Lost Marcher to put into play? He keeps just playing from his hand and it's making me very nervous. <laughs> I really wish that Justin had just another Lost Marcher in play right now. He does have the Guzma. I see him eyeing up the Guzma. But he knows by Guzmaing the Natu into the active position, he leaves the Trash Lance Garbodor just ready to attack. So that means that just or that Will will not have to look for another will not have to look for another attacker next turn. He's just going to get to keep that Garbodor to attack again. So Justin knows by playing this, he probably won't be able to win. I mean, that Lele is going up to 120 here. So hopefully they don't miss the shrine damage. And Will has got Beast Energy on the Buzzwall. Uh, he'll just take a knockout. Let's see. Why doesn't he Lily? That's uh, that's my question here. Is he going to... Oh, okay. Here we go. It's going to say. Uh, he's got the Lily. He's got the, the Buzzwall. He's got the Beast Energy. Here we go. So going to draw. And he's got a Weavile as well. And I'll take the knockout on the Natu, going down to two prizes. The Lele is going up to 130 damage. Can Justin find another way? No. Uh, so he just has to hope that Will doesn't have Guzma. If Will has Guzma, it's game over. I don't see the Guzma in his hand right now. So Justin has a turn. He's going to Lost Blunder away. Oh, is he scoop? He's scooping. Oh, he, he's out of Lost Marchers. Justin just ran out of Lost Marchers, so he can't do it. He scooped the game to Will. He was just showing that he doesn't have it, so Will finally gets a win under his belt there. Justin, unfortunately, running out of resources, so that was really tough there. Tough end to the game. Good game, nonetheless. Will was able to fight his way out of that one after some very, very, uh, I guess, sketchy early game action going on there. Losing the Trubbish turn one to a Tapu Lele and the Choice Band going down with it. Will was looking like he was not going to be able to pull that one off. Justin just ran out of resources, though. I think he just might have lost Blender just too many things away there. He didn't have access to his Natus, uh, or just the list just maybe didn't play a Rescue Stretcher, or he didn't have access to Rescue Stretcher. So I think that Rescue Stretcher could have been really big for Justin to finish out that game there in order to pull off the win. Maybe Justin just didn't have the uh, didn't have the rescue stretcher available to him. And Natalie in the chat saying that he was just out of all his nat twos and wasn't going to be able to pull it off. So, oh, yikes. Yeah, so Natalie is saying that Justin borrowed this deck from somebody and the list does not play rescue stretcher. So, yeah, that's, uh, that is the... That is the bad thing about borrowing someone else's decks that you don't exactly get to pick all the cards in it. So yes, definitely gonna want a Rescue Stretcher in your Lost March deck. Justin got right to the finish line there and couldn't pull it off. He had plenty of energy, but not enough Nat Twos to continue attacking there. Round two at the Full Grip Games Weekly Tournament. Let's get it popping here. Brady's got everyone's favorite clowns on the right versus Orlando's mystery deck. Let's see if maybe we can see what he's playing by looking at him shuffle. That's always uh, <laughs> that's always an option. We can see if maybe we get a glimpse of what he's playing over there, but we can always just be patient as well. So no idea what Orlando's playing, but he does have some very nice hand tattoos. So digging that. Very cool, Orlando. Very cool. And Brady, of course, very experienced player with Blacephalon. Uh, he plays this most weeks. I've seen him also bring uh, decks like Lost March, but Blacephalon, I think, is a favorite of his. 
seeing some double colorlesses in Orlando's deck. So it could be Zorark, it could be uh, Passimian. You never know. Players are going for the opening flip. All right. And here we go. Getting started here. Man, Orlando's got some really cool hand tattoos. I'm, like, definitely digging it. Very, very cool. Those look like super boss on stream. Like, not going to lie. Like, that looks incredible. Not going to lie. All right. So we're seeing, ooh, this is another Lost March deck. All right. So we have got Lost March versus Blacephalon. We know Brady knows how to play against this deck. So this should be a very tight matchup between these two players. And excited to see how it boils down here for them both. I know Brady's recent uh, Blacephalon lists have favored playing higher counts of Naganadel, so he should be able to stream Naganadel here on his side of the board and make it difficult for Orlando to kind of overcome. If Brady starts a Blacephalon, I honestly think that Blacephalon is like the ideal starter for uh, Brady, so he could just go in with the turn one burst GX and then uh, get a Naganade and then like probably use his, uh, you know, his, what, the, the mind blown attack turn two, right? And go for a knockout that way and kind of get two prizes real quick with Blacephalon and then just go with his four Naganade L's for game, right? So, I think that that's probably Brady's best strategy. However, if he starts with the Poip Bowl, yeah, then we're definitely going to go in with the Naganade out early. So Brady does start with the Blacephalon and is going first, but Orlando starts with Natu. That is amazing for Orlando because that means that he is going to be able to attack as early as turn one. So the Blacephalon start could be a blessing and a curse for Brady here because Brady does get to be aggressive but also will be giving up two prizes very quickly. So I don't mind it. It's definitely not a bad start. Uh, could even be ideal, I guess. But going first, uh, I'm thinking that maybe Naganadel's the ideal starter going first because then you get to turn two knockout with a, uh, a Naganadel. However, uh, that being said, Starting Blacephalon is a little bit better because uh, that Natu could very easily knock out a Poiple turn one as well. So it's uh, it's a little bit tough. It's just a tough matchup either way. Brady's just going to have to hope that he can out-trade with Orlando. And also that Orlando will at some point put down a Tapu Lele. It's definitely like uh, hope number one is that Orlando puts down a Tapu Lele. But if he doesn't, then Brady's just got to hope that he whiffs an attack at some point. That's kind of the recipe for beating a Lost March deck, is just hope they whiff an attack. I think that uh, that's pretty much the consensus. Everybody knows that Lost March just is a deck that can beat everything if they draw exactly what they need. So... That's just uh, that's just the situation. What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining us here for Tricky Jim's uh, tournament stream here at Full Grip Games. Stoked about it. Should be a good matchup for us here in round two. Got Orlando. Got the Nat 2 start. Hop up on the bench. We'll go for Netball and probably just grab himself another Hop up if I had to guess. Uh, to put down on his bench. We see him eyeing up the hop up there, so he will gladly grab that, move it to the front of his deck, and then after doing a little deck search, we'll probably just slap that down onto the bench. Now, I didn't see whether or not Orlando has a draw supporter in his hand. Definitely something that he's going to want to have. Uh, or at least an Elm for turn two to help get some Pokemon, some Natus, or some uh, Hop Ips there into the Lost Zone. But he does have a Cynthia, so he'll just go and shuffle up, draw six cards. It's looking like he may not get to actually do any damage here with the Natu turn one. He would have to just kind of rip like a Lost Blunder and a DCE and some Pokemon all you know right here right now so i'm thinking that he might not just 
hit all of that, and that's okay. He's uh, he's kind of pacing himself and setting up some hot pips, so that should be able to sustain his board position later in the game for sure. Gets another couple Nat 2s there. I think also a Tapu Koko, a Guzma, and a Grass Energy. Uh, the final card in his hand is Ranguru, so that's very good because that's going to allow him to continue to draw some more cards and kind of grind his way through this. Now, Tapu Koko is a very interesting card uh, to play in a Lost March deck. It's not something that you see in every list, but I definitely I get it. Uh, it helps soften things up. Also, just another DCE attacker with free retreat. Also, an ideal starter. If you start Tapu Koko, you can go in with a turn one flying flip, which can just bring everybody's hit points down further, making it all that much easier to take one hit knockouts with your Lost Marcher. So an interesting inclusion there on Orlando's side, and I think that it is a very good idea. So uh, Brady got double uh, fire energy on his active Blacephalon. I would not be surprised to see a mind blown from Brady here to knock out that Nat 2 just to weaken up his board position a little bit and also just get another Lost Marcher into the discard. I think that would be a fine play from Brady. I don't think there's any reason to GX when you could just save the GX for the game-winning play later in the game. I think that using your GX as like your final win, uh, you know, your win attack is very good. And weakening the board position is always good with Blacephalon early on if you don't need to GX. Usually I reserve the GX for a turn that's like I kind of whiffed the knockout, then you'll use your GX to just take a prize anyway. So I fully expect to see Brady just go with the mind blown one energy loss zone. That is like no sweat whatsoever. He's going to get another Naganadel into play as well, or I should say his first Naganadel into play, which will allow him to start to charge up as well. He's got plenty of fire energy in the discard pile. Some beautiful fire energy, by the way. Nice reverse hollow fire energy there looking super sick. He's got double mysterious treasure. There's one thing I know about Brady is that he draws some hot fire with uh, with Blacephalon pretty consistently, to be honest. So he is setting up very stellar. This is a an exceptional turn too. Uh, of Blacephalon doing exactly what Blacephalon wants to do. Get Blacephalon out, two fires on it, turn two, two Naganadels, both of which can charge up four energy in play. Brady could very easily just pump out a 200 damage attack here, turn two with no B-strings. Just absolutely fantastic stuff. And we see him go for the mind blown there, uh, just like I thought he would instead of the GX attack. Now, Orlando does have a double colorless energy and a lost blender, so his hand is live. He's also got an Elms Lecture. I think I don't mind him going in with the Elms Lecture, shipping off two of the hop ips to turn them into jump bluffs, and then maybe grabbing a third hop ip, uh, and then just flying flipping. I think that's okay. And he can kind of just pare his hand down from there so that he can instruct and maybe go for a grass energy to finish off this Blacephalon next turn. That's probably fine, unless he's got some sort of crazy plan here to get nine Pokemon in the Lost Zone, I just don't really think that that's going to happen. So just like I thought, uh, Orlando is going to go for the two Skip Looms and the Hop Ip. I like this play a lot. He's going to Floral Path both of these. So he's got four Pokemon in the Lost Zone. I just don't think that he can get nine Pokemon in the Lost Zone to take this one hit KO. He's got the Lost Blender, but no other Pokemon in his hand other than that Hopip. And I doubt he wants to just Lost Blender away the Hopip there. Uh, that's probably not the best course of action. I think he needs to evolve the Hopip to get the, both the Hoplip and the Skiploom into the Lost Zone next turn. So I very much expect him to go 
flying flip here, even though that does kind of feel like a turn lost against Brady. Brady's going to be able to go up two prizes before Orlando finally takes down that plus Eflon. So that would be very tough for Orlando to overcome. That's Brady's exact game plan. That's exactly what he wants. Ooh, we do see him eyeing up that Lost Blunder, though. He is going to ditch the hop if. All right, so he's going for it. Uh, he just... He wants it all right now. He's uh, sending the fifth Pokemon to the Lost Zone. He is saying, I'm not flying and flipping this turn, dude. I am uh, going for broke here. Uh, shipping away that hop hip like that. Definitely an aggressive play. But now he kind of concedes. And it's like, you know what? I don't actually think I'm going to get it. I have to commit this DCE now. That's fine. He's got a nest ball in his hand. Oh, he's just going to fly and flip. Okay. So he'll save the net ball in his hand and just use that to go grab a grass energy next turn. But I don't really like the situation that Orlando's put himself into. I think I'd much rather have seen that hop hip go down to the bench because if the hop hip goes down to the bench, that means that uh, Orlando can just have seven Pokemon in the lost zone very easily, or six Pokemon in the lost zone very easily next turn. If he just evolves that into Hop Hip, gets another Jump Bluff into play, then save the Lost Blender. Just Cynthia that thing back into the deck. If you Cynthia the Lost Blender back into the deck, then uh, then you can have a higher chance of drawing into some Pokemon with that Lost Blender off of the Cynthia, and then maybe Lost Blender some things away the fine, the next turn and hit that one-hit KO that you want on the Blacephalon. I understand that the Tapu Koko is a little bit harder, uh, is a little bit harder to knock out for Brady, but Brady's going to have no problem doing that. He will gladly just go in and mind blown three energy to knock that thing out. So that's just all he's going to do. It's going to be very easy for him. He's got three Naganadel out. And if he can find another Poiple, Brady will gladly just put another Poiple down into play as well and just start working on his fourth Naganadel. Now, I guess, you know, he does have to be a little bit cautious of, you know, sending away all his energy here. But not really. This Blacephalon is just going to keep swinging until it goes down. And then he really only needs like six energy in play total. He can afford to lost zone like nine energy before he's like down to his final six. And he'll just trade his final six energy between his remaining Naganadels and just take the game that way. I know that, you know, Orlando can go get the grass energy here, but he's only got five Pokemon in the lost zone. That's why it's like I really wish that he had played that... I guess that grass is on the jump bluff, right, man? I mean, he just slammed down that Cynthia without actually committing the grass anywhere. So I'm hoping that the grass energy is actually on the jump bluff. It is just kind of in the middle of the board right now. Uh, but I'm assuming that he intended for that to be on the jump bluff, considering that it's not like... It's not in his deck, so maybe it's just very sloppily attached to the bench jump bluff. It kind of is touching it, right? So I guess it, like... Yeah, it's kind of there, right? Yo, oh, he's no, it's going to the active. All right, the the grass energy was just in no man's land, but who's asking any questions? That's fine. So he's got the marsh shadow, he's got a skip bloom and a rescue stretcher, but like I said, dude, like you're not going to be able to get the eight Pokemon into the lost zone that you need without another Hoppip. He needed to have that Hoppip benched last turn, and not benching it is potentially a game losing scenario. I think he just got himself into a corner here with the way that he played that, and it's probably not going to be able to be recovered from. Thank you so much, Watchler, for the sub, my man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, my man, or, you know, my person. I don't know. I can't assume anything, but thank you so much for the sub. Appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. You rock. So, yes. Uh, Orlando here definitely in a corner that he does not want to be in. Uh, he's trying to thin his hand down. I mean, now it's like you could go for the uh, the Trumbeak, I guess. So he's going to Ultra Ball, get Trumbeak, send a Trumbeak. Uh, he could draw into another Trumbeak. That's going to be six. He needs seven, eight. He needs to draw into two more Trumbeaks in order to make this happen. So he does have Instruct. He does have Marshadow in order to let loose. I just don't like this corner that he's really dug himself into, I think somewhat unnecessarily. Definitely didn't need to. Uh, I think we reveal an energy there on the top of Brady's deck, so that's just going to stay. And then I think he's got a rescue stretcher, and maybe 
instruct for one? Or did he already instruct before? I think he might already instruct it. He's just going to let loose. I can't remember if he instructed this turn or if that was last turn. But, you know, we're going to let him loose and see if Orlando can draw into two more Trumbeaks to take out this Blacephalon. Either that or is going to need one Trumbeak and a Choice Band to take the knockout. Either way, Brady is sitting very fabulously right now. And uh, in fact, even if this Blacephalon goes down, I still think that Brady's in the driver's seat and still is favored. So we see Cynthia, Natu, Lily, and a Trumbeak. Oh, that is crushing. So he hasn't instructed yet. He will ship the Trumbeak. He's very close. But just imagine if he had had the hop hip down. It would be so much easier to make this play happen, my guy. Okay, so he's got this. He's just got to instruct for one. It's got to be a Trumbeak. That's just it. And he's got, you know, he's just short. It's got to be a Trumbeak here off the instruct. But no, he's not. He must have already instructed. I missed it. Or that, or he didn't feel like instructing here. He's just going to hit for not enough. So he has to hit for 140. That is so bad. That is just so rough for Orlando. Uh, if Orlando plays a copy of like Shrine, I guess he can redeem himself from this horrible position. But. Otherwise, you know, Brady's just going to take another knockout with Blacephalon, and that is just horrible. Orlando trades super negatively here because Brady gets to take three prizes with his two-prize attacker and just is trading so well. He's got three Pokemon on his bench that can just sustain themselves turn after turn with Charge Up, and doesn't really matter what his hand is looking like from here on out. He's going to be able to just sweep. There's no way you can't let a Blacephalon get three prizes ahead doesn't matter who you are can't really let this deck get three prizes ahead and come out on top uh without being able to take some sort of you know crazy three prize four prize turn and really the only decks that can pull that off are decidui decks which uh we we don't actually see a lot of here at league i do have uh, uh bryant seltzer sending me an alola nine tails really stoked on that thank you bryant uh, shout out to Brian, awesome dude, and uh, sending me an Alola Ninetales. I actually don't own any Alola Ninetales yet, so I'm really excited to start building my own Alola Ninetales decks, uh, my own Decidueye decks, my own uh, you know Zorark decks with Ninetales in it. There's so many decks with Ninetales that I want to build, but haven't been able to. Last month was like you know Christmas month, so I was saving up for all uh, Christmas gifts and so on and so forth. So. Didn't actually get to invest into an Alolan Ninetales yet, but got one on the, on the way, so I'm stoked on that. I'm going to be able to bring Alolan Ninetales decks to tournaments, so really, really stoked on that. Cool stuff. All right, Orlando getting himself a new hand here off of the Cynthia, but just lo and behold, that Blacephalon just still out there. Brady at three prizes just feels so bad. And here is the Trumbeak. Finally got that other Trumbeak into the Lost Zone. So he's got eight Pokemon down, but it's just like too little too late. I don't even think that Orlando actually hit an energy. We see him Great Ball here, and he sees a Boost Energy, the Super Boost, and a Grass. But none of those are in his hand. So he's just going to try and pare his hand down with Ultra Ball here. And then has to try to instruct into them. That's all he can do. There's nothing else. He's got to try to instruct for two and hope he gets it. So he'll take another quick look through his deck. If there's a Trumbeak, he'll send it. Yep, he'll grab it and send it just to get it out of the deck, thin the deck a little bit. Uh, otherwise, he is just going to have to... Ooh, he's eyeing up the Marshadow. He might just want to let loose, I guess. And potentially draw four more cards that way. So I think he's going for it. All right. I think uh, the let loose is interesting here. I think I almost feel like uh, just instruct for two. I guess the four cards is like it nets you more. Uh, but then, you know, you might just draw back into the, you know, you might just draw back into the, uh, the Trump Beak again. And he'll instruct for one first, so he does get to see that. I guess he sees more cards this way kind of, but then he could always just let loose back into these two cards. So it's uh, it's really um, it's really an interesting call there as far as like which has a higher probability. Uh, I think that 
Potentially, the uh, the Mars Shadow gives you a higher probability of finding an energy because you get to shuffle draw four instead of just a straight draw two while thinning one out of the deck. So I think that the shuffle draw four gives you more, even though you are technically shuffling some of those cards back into the deck and have a chance of drawing them back. Still, four you know four cards is more than two, so I still think that your your odds are probably higher. Sure enough, let's see, he does not get it. Oh, just nothing, man. Orlando, that is crushing, my dude. Having to pass here with the Marsh Shadow active. That plus Cephalon's going to take four prizes. He will not have even been able to knock out anybody. That is super tough. And you know what Brady's going to do here? Because Brady is a smart cookie, and I know he definitely sees this play. With that Marsh Shadow active, you already know, he's going to burst GX. It's time. This is the time that you burst GX. So, Brady's going to put that Ultra Space into play, probably go just grab another Pokemon out of his deck and just throw it into his hand just to thin the deck a little bit. But so long as Brady just has access to one Fire Energy or an Energy Switch, he'll just throw the Energy up onto the Placephalon and just Burst GX. So that means that Burst GX, he'll just be able to take a prize without actually knocking out the Marshadow. That means that Orlando is going to be stuck with that Marshadow active another turn. And I think at this point, there's just no way he comes back from it. It's just not possible. Brady discards one of his prize cards, going down to two prize cards remaining with Burst GX. And Orlando is just ultimately stuck. And insult to injury gets the grass energy off the top. That's so painful. So horrible. That's the card he was looking for. It was the next card off of the Let Loose, my guy. That is just so unbelievably rough. Brady's going to go five prizes deep with just the one Blacephalon with 160 damage on it. That is insane. Uh, Brady didn't even need any of these Naganadels. He could have won the game with just Blacephalon straight up. And that's just some very unfortunate draws here for Orlando. Uh, very unfortunate stuff. And I've said it time and time and time again, and I mean it, dude. Uh, the worst enemy of Lost March is Lost March for sure. Uh, itself, just when it doesn't hit those numbers early, you just lose the game, unfortunately. Hitting these weird turns, not getting enough damage. Missing a knockout on a Blacephalon by 20 damage, just super brutal. So Brady's just gonna probably go in and mind blown the mind blown this thing. He's got energy switch. There's no problems there. He's just making sure that he's got enough energy in order to finish off the game. All he needs to do is make sure that he can mind blown off of the active Blacephalon and then just charge up and attack. Now, uh, I'm sure he's got like B-strings in his hand as well and probably has energy left in deck. So he just will wait for Orlando to finally take a knockout. And when Orlando does take this knockout, or five, six, seven, eight, I think he's got eight energy, right? Uh, eight energy, so all Orlando has to do is pop him, take this knockout, Brady will probably play one of the three B strings that have been sitting in his hand for like four turns and just take the easy out here. Uh, let's see. Orlando is actually just going to promote the Orangaroo here. Uh, he might be looking at either a Guzma or a deck out scenario. So, like, I think, like, maybe he just says that, you know, maybe Brady doesn't have a way to get that thing out of the active position, just tries to deck him out. Like, that's probably a nightmare. I don't think you actually win the game by doing that. But he will take out this Naganadel, I guess, with a Nat 2. That means that all Brady has to do is attack, and it's over. So I, he didn't activate B-String, so I think he was hoping that maybe he could avoid activating B-String. I think that was his thought here. But if you KO the one with the energy, you actually are much more likely, right, like Natalie is saying, much more likely to stick him if you KO the one with the energy on it. So that could have been a very heads-up play for him. Brady's going to go ahead and just... Throw down another GX. He's throwing the Tapu Lele down. He doesn't really care. All he wants is to just get another energy into the discard pile. Uh, he's going to grab the Sightseer here. So with the Sightseer, Brady is going to hope to ditch a energy to his discard pile. So he's going to discard his entire hand, probably which is like filled with B-strings and all that kind of stuff. He's probably just going to ditch it 
uh, and then draw five and hope that he just hits a fire energy off of his five cards. I have to imagine Brady's just going to let like light this whole hand on fire. Sure. And sure enough, there is at least one B-string in there. Discards it. Draws five. He's got a fire energy in the discard pile now. And he's got fire for game. So that's it. Brady will take the win. Go to 2-0 here. Just running that Lost March deck off the table. So... Very good game by both players there. Uh, Brady showing his expertise with the Blacephalon deck. Definitely, uh, definitely a stellar play there by Brady. So tough draws there for Orlando. Unfortunately, that's just kind of the dealio with Lost March. It's definitely a fun deck to play, but sometimes it can just get clunked up with them hands. And you just have a hard time recovering once you fall behind in the trade. Lost March is a deck that likes to just get ahead in the prize trade and stay there, or at least like catch up by taking out huge, uh, huge Pokemon GX for you know one hit knockouts turn after turn. But Brady there set up his board like a champ, knew exactly what he was doing, and was able to capitalize on his opponent not taking some quick knockouts. So tough stuff for Lost March tonight. Have to agree. That is a uh, that is just a rough go for Lost March. 0-2, both games. We saw Lost March take the L today. Josh Vardos, welcome to the stream, everybody. This is Josh, local player and bird watcher extraordinaire. 307 species last year. Last year, get it, man. Third place. In the 300 in the club, dude. That was your first time hitting 300 birds in one year, right? Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's, I mean, that's not an easy no, thing no. to do, so it's probably, will that be your only time doing a 300 yeah, year Yeah, I'll think? never do that ever again. Never again, it's yeah. A whole year commitment every day. Oh my gosh, wild though. But you know what? Now you have that accomplishment, and nobody can take that away from you. So you had that experience. and Correct. Yeah, that's amazing. So we've got, let's see. Now, I feel Natalie like I'm, playing. I'm always, going? she was for a second. Uh, I'm always stuck here, she, she said, Will and Brady, right? So it's got to be Will on the left. All right. Uh, I'm always stuck here trying to, like, figure out whose hands. <laughs> <laughs> Might have uh, to be easy. <laughs> yeah, it was easy enough. But, like, you know, judging between, like, Will and Justin, I'm like, I, don't, I don't know, you know. All right, we got Will and Brady. So this is going to be uh, Buzz Shrine against Brady Hot Hands Botner. <laughs> Brady, ooh, I should I should write that in the yeah Brady yeah, yeah, yeah for sure yeah Brady. Uh, I didn't see his last hot he just hands straight flames. Oh, it's yeah. every game, bro. <laughs> Brady hot hands spot. <laughs> oh no, it doesn't fit. Oh no, they're starting. Okay, that's fine. There we go. So they're over there now. Ooh, I need to like kind of fix that. Yeah, he's running off the uh, he's <laughs> he's running off the table. All right, that's fine. I'm gonna fix this up. But let's see. I, I messed around. I was playing too many games, and now we got. Uh, let's see, they're both two zero. Huh? Oh, I'm on top of it, Natalie. I'm out here. Yep, for sure. All right. So this is round three. So they're both two zero. Excellent. And <laughs> Brady is. Brady Hot Hands. All right, there we go. Beautiful. And transition. Excellent. All right, so here we go. We got Buzz Shrine against uh, Blacephalon. Looks like Brady went first. Actually just attached to Fire Energy and passed. Mm -hmm. So that's not good. Uh, maybe I cursed him with the Hot Hands. He have, he's got a <laughs> handful of fire. It's hot Hands. Hot there. Hands. Uh, he's got... I swear he's got a handful of fire. And it's just all fire. It literally, I think, is like six fire cards. Where Will, starting out Trubbish, got a ditto, a Buzzwall on the bench with the Beast Energy. Uh, we made a joke about Will the other day that he starts Beast Energy like 70% of his games. Pretty accurate, yeah. as, as we're seeing here. Will loves Buzzwall decks. He cannot get off of it. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> loves just... Loves Buzz. <laughs> loves Buzzwall. He doesn't really have any other decks built right now, and I'm excited to see him 2-0 because, like I was saying earlier in the stream, he just had a pretty crushing weekend with, like, uh, New Year's and everything. Yeah, he, 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 <laughs> <laughs> he lost almost every single card game he played in the week. It didn't matter if it was Keyforge, oh, like, Pokemon, Cubing. Like 0-12. He was 0-12 <laughs> on the weekend, so... Really excited to see him up here, you know, with a couple wins under his belt, kind of getting a new uh, 
you know, breath of fresh air here and maybe some some newfound confidence. But it looks like Will could run him here. I mean, Brady just has another. He attacked. He took his prize. But he's got nothing else going on on his side of the field where Will has set up the Macargo. He's got the Orangaroo. He's got a Buzzwell with a beast energy on it. Uh, unfortunately, that Trubbish is not going to be doing a whole lot. But I have to imagine that he's stacking Guzma here. Yeah. No, you can get rid of that. Uh... Poiple that there. Poiple in a heartbeat would be fantastic. For It'd sure. Slow it down. So that's definitely what Will is going for. He's going to take out the Poiple uh, with the Buzzwell. Just instruct for one. Instruct for two? Oh, he's already got the Guzma. Yikes. Oh, uh, there it goes. Busted. So he's stacking Diane. Diancy then? Maybe he doesn't need it. Could have been anything, really. Maybe a supporter for next turn, just to be safe. Probably a Cynthia, now that I kind of see this. Or is really all I would want. Uh, but it looks like he gave himself a Weavile, probably. Uh, it doesn't actually matter like what he stacked because he was going to continue to be able to stack the next following turns and turns and turns and turns here. So he's got everything he needs. He's got the Diancy. He's got the Buzzwell and the Active with the Beast. This could be the end for Brady Hot Hands, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. So... Yeah, that's, uh, that's no good, Brady. I don't know how your deck ended up, uh, you know, tossing you like eight fires here, but a Sightseer would be, you know, pretty ideal, I guess. He would be a, oh, he has got a, uh, he's got a, bailout <laughs> he's, got a he's got an Ultra Space. That doesn't quite do it. Uh, and unfortunately, the crazy thing is, is that if Brady GX is here, then it's just he's inviting a one-hit KO from that Buzzwall. That's just it. So he can't. He's just in a lose-lose situation. He can't not attack, like for sure. He's got a. No. You could. I think he actually might just need to confuse him. I'm cool with that. I think yeah, he needs not? to do it. He needs to set up. He needs some time to get some more mons down, or he is done. Or he's done. That's it. So he's got to bursting burn here. Uh, I think he needs to get a poiple. Uh, so he'll just he'll just throw that onto the bench. And then he needs to just bursting, burning, confuse, and hope that Will doesn't have a way out of it. Though I'm sure Will plays Switch, so kind of just a tough situation. Yeah, no, Will's uh, sitting pretty. Yeah. Sure. He's got everything he needs. It, he does. I don't think that Brady actually digs himself out of here. So it's crazy. We've seen, like, just every single game on stream so far has just been pretty much a blowout. So what uh, what happened with you in today's tournament, Josh? Oh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Lost March does Lost March things. Oh, why do you keep bringing it then? Because <laughs> I love it. Hey, I topped a cut last, last month. It's That's fine. That's pretty good. There you go. Lost March doesn't do well all the time, but it does well enough when it hits the matchups. There you go. Right. So No, it, I just love playing it. It's you just, love playing it. It is a lot of fun to play. It is. I actually don't. I love those fun one prizes. I don't know what's happening on camera right now. It looks like they were pausing maybe for a, a ruling or a question or something like that, but... Looks like they're back in action now. I think, yeah, Brady's just going to slap that Poiple down, probably attach one of his many energy. <laughs> and this kid needs a supporter. Like, oh, tomorrow. like nobody's business. And then, yes, we'll yeah, go for the Bursting Burn. Go. Brady definitely knows how to pilot this deck. He's not playing around. Like, he's he's keyed into what he has to do. He rolled tails. Yeah. Um, so the thing's still burned, which is good, actually, mm -hmm. because Brady could next turn, if he takes the burn damage again, which he's... Poised to do if he doesn't get his himself out of this. And I don't think the Will can actually pare his hand down small enough. Oh, well, maybe he can. Mm -hmm. uh, so he'll probably go for Guzma or something. But the Guzma, and then he can just retreat. I was going to say, if Brady can get himself to a situation where... Is that a switch in his hand? I can't actually tell. Maybe a stretcher. You know. I can't tell Stretch what the ball. other card is. But either way... Um, if Brady can get himself in a situation where he can just mind blown that buzzwell with the beast energy, you do it mm -hmm. ten times out of ten. He <laughs> just he just take that knockout, and you hope that Will doesn't you know summon up another huge one hit KO. Oh, that is oh, yeah, a switch. He's gotta go for the goozy. Uh huh. So that's crazy. And then I guess do you think Will just stacked another Guzma, and just will take out the Poiple again? I would. I'm crazy. Have crazy to. aggressive, man. You have to. You kill that thing. It, you, you have to. do anything without Exactly. So w Brady's just in a situation now where he just has to top deck B-string. Sure. It's got to be. <laughs> and that's it. It's got to be B-string. Uh, two two B-strings. Two B-strings. It's got to. <laughs> oh, Cynthia. It needs a Cynthia into a Blacephalon, two Poiples, and two B-strings. And then he's got a Marshadow into some more stuff after that. 
Uh huh. Got the buzz too. So it's really this is it's not good. Not no. good at all. But you know there is a route for Brady if it's a Cynthia right here. It's got to be a Cynthia. There's no other way, Brady. Come on, Brady. Hot hands, Brady. Let's go. Uh, let's, let's go. Let's That's not a Cynthia. Uh, that no, would have been <laughs> you real just, quick. You could tell by the way that yeah, the way that that card didn't come flying down. On, it was a B string though. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was a B nice. string. Um, so he does actually have knockout, and since he retains the ultra space, he could go get another Pokemon. So he's gonna have probably two Blacephalon. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you just get a Blacephalon at this point? Mm-hmm. Oh, he might be going for Poipo. I respect both. I think both are fine. I think Poipo probably, but he keeps bullying these Poipos and just taking like mad prizes on them. So. You might just go for two Blacephalon and then just say, you know what, I'll just like hit, I'll hit the Poiple later. But nah, he's, he hits Poiple. That's fine. I like that. Will's on three prizes? Is that three? He's, I think he's it got four. four. Right? He's on four. There's four. three up top yeah, and then one. So. Yeah. It's just the lavender sleeves yeah. are kind of hard to read. Yeah. This is the first B string turn that Brady's had. So he'll bench the Poiple, probably B string. Oh, and he's got Mysterious Trip. Where did that come from? He had no the idea. B string he, in his hand the whole time. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had the B string. Had he must to. have top decked that mysterious treasure. Okay. So that's interesting. He's got moves now. Oh, he's got oh, double two. B string. Oh, he just had a hand with him. It just it's got hot hands. Brady could he's not out of this game for sure. You know, but he does have to be a little bit wary of how many items he plays. Because it's trash lanch garbador's thing that he has to worry about. And he has to be worried about how many abilities he puts into play as well because of the Weavile. For sure enough, here it goes, right? Double Poiple. Still no supporter. For no, but did he... <laughs> I what, know. He did, did he play the Mysterious Treasure already? He had to have for the other Poiple. Was it so for the other Poiple? spaced one and probably treasured the other. And then... Is he just rocking the no supporter life? Like, he's yeah. not putting down yeah. Shadow. He's not yeah. putting down Lele. He's like, no, that Weavile eat me alive. I ain't doing it. You can't. You can't. I mean, I guess. I mean, he's got so many attackers sitting there that he has to face. <laughs> like, you have to pick your poison. <laughs> I guess. Oh, my gosh. I mean, he knows, based on his item count and everything else, he knows that there's pretty much no way Will knocks out this Blacephalon next turn. So... I like this play, kind of diversifying his options, just loss owning the two energy with the beast ring or the beast energy on the active, knocks out the buzzwell there. Good stuff. The Weavile comes out. He's actually got no uh, no abilities in play. Mm-mm. Super conservative None. play there from Brady. That's beautiful. So that is a, that's excellent board position there for him. Will, I guess if Will were to get a sledgehammer, no, you can't really do it. He needs no. he needs well. I mean, it's possible. Well, he needs Choice Band, Kakui, and that's it. And an energy. All on a benched Buzzwall. And you see him kind of like Choice the gears band. are turning in his head, and he's like, can I do it? Because <laughs> that's what he wants to do. He wants to Kakui. He's getting the Buzzwall. He knows he's like, now's the sledgehammer turn. Uh, I had him in here earlier, and he just had a four prize turn against Justin where he just didn't sledgehammer. And then I just asked him, he like, he just used Garbodor instead. And I asked him, I was like, why didn't you sledgehammer? He's like, I don't know, it didn't matter, I won. It didn't matter. (laughs) (laughs) So he's he's going for the sledgehammer here, for sure. And ditching his other buzzwolves. So, like, they're out of the deck. He's going to get the trash lance Garbodor. I like this setup. This is very good. And then... He's going to smooth over probably an energy or a Kakui. I think he's smooth over the Kakui and then draw. Like, in my I think that's what you do. Uh, he's already got the choice band. Uh, and then, yep, that's just uh, my opinion. Your odds of hitting the Kakui are very small, a lot smaller than hitting the fighting, I think, if that's what he's going for. But I think he's not going for Kakui. He's, he just picked the energy, right? Yeah. So then he could just be going for Guzma or what, or he just even just hitting it for 170 is like really good, because he could hit Shrine. Oh, he doesn't need he doesn't need Kakui. He could do Shrine. Mm-hmm. So, I like that. Guarantees himself the attack with the energy. So. He's already so far ahead too. He is right. If he hits the Shrine here, it's like it's over, and he's gonna Cynthia. Oh my gosh, that's just insane. Yeah. So he's got everything he needs. If he hits the shrine, it's 180 damage after the shrine. That's just like absolutely brutal. So I like that he guaranteed himself the attack there with the 
with the blend energy or the unit energy. I keep wanting to call that blend energy. The unit energy. Good stuff. We'll see if he hits it. He hasn't seen a shrine yet. So uh, his odds, I would say, are pretty high. And there it is. There it is. He's got it. One hit KO there. Shrine comes down. Oh, Brady. It's looking sad, my man. And you're off of that. Ooh, off the B string turn. Uh, now he can, you know, if. If he top decks an Aganadel, he can knock out this puzzle next turn. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's, <laughs> like it's psychic battle. He can. <laughs> yeah, it's not good, but you know, I mean, you know, we're taking what we can get here, Brady. All right, let's go, Brady. Give me something good. That's a lily. Oh gosh, what an inopportune time to get a lily. Uh, it's fine. He's like, why couldn't I have gotten that earlier? But even if he'd got it earlier, you know, he would have. Had a clogged hand with a bunch of B strings in it, probably wouldn't have done much. Okay, gets four off the lily though. All he needs is mysterious treasure or uh, ultra space or something, but it all feels pretty fruitless. At this point, he has to have played like enough items, I think, for yeah, psychic week. It yeah, and then even just playing the ultra ball to go get the Naganade is another item down. He only needs what? F how many items down? Four? Would four do it? Eighty? Yeah, times two. Three wouldn't do it. 60 times two, 120. No. So he needs four items in the discard pile, and he definitely has four because he's got the Ultra Ball, the Mysterious Treasure, and at least two B strings. So, and he'll let loose. All right. So he knows he's like down this Naganade yeah, So then his hope is prayer. that's yeah. it. I mean, but you can't really because at this point you're going to no, just have enough. He has attackers in the back. I mean, we'll. Yeah. It's just GG. Scoop it's it up. GG. <laughs> it's GG's. I guess, you know, that's just, uh, uh, is there, you know, enough stuff? Uh, is there enough, is there a combination of four cards that Will can draw here that doesn't win him the game? No, I don't think so. I don't think so either. Especially since he can just take this so knockout with Weavile now. And I think that Will just does that. If he is able to, like if he draws into the other energy, you just keep the Garbodor in the back because you know you'll be able to knock out whatever with Garbodor. And then you just take the knockout with Weavile when you have the chance. Because Weavile is just like the, is the conditional attacker there. And also has the nasty psychic resistance. So if he attacks the Weavile, it's just like game over, right? So, yep, Brady's going to take his first knockout with Naganado there. Items. Yep. <laughs> It's fine. He goes down to three prizes, but um, let's see. Will's got to look at his hand. Yeah, probably promoting the Weavile. Yeah, I like that for sure. And he's got Lily. So he could just smooth over. I would just smooth over the energy Lily into it uh, at this point. If you're Will, uh, you, even if you're just Lilying for two, then you just do that. Uh, take the knockout with Weavile. You got Garbodor, Guzma for game. That's all you need. Oh. Uh, so that's it. And gonna Lily. Yep, probably for the energy. Love it. Good play there by Will. Will's gonna take the knockout on the Naganado and go down to one prize remaining. He's got Guzma in his hand for game there. And Brady <laughs> is just stuck, man. I it looks think, like my match is on stream. I think, yeah. So it's not just it's no. not just you, man. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it happens God. to everybody. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, hot hands no more. We got to switch it to cold hands, right? I mean. Yeah. Is, he didn't see a supporter for four turns. Four Maybe turns. Yeah, five. really I don't bad. Even know when. He... Uh huh. Yeah, we could. <laughs> <laughs> we could change it to Brady Cold Hands. Uh, Brady, hands. Hot Hands. Brady, uh, Yikes Hands. <laughs> <laughs> Brady, Yikes Hands. There we go. GG's. All right. So, good game. Will will move on to B3-0 at the Full Group Games Wednesday, Wednesday night tournament here. Willie the Kid. Does will the Kid. I know. With his favorite Buzzwool... Shrine deck. Will is out to 3 0. So, uh, Josh, so I see you, you got the Lost March hands today. Nothing uh, worked out? Yeah, no, no, no. I, I played, um, I don't know if you, you have, probably haven't seen Holden yet on stream. I have not seen Holden. What's he playing? Lost March with Zorarg. Oh, wild. very cool. <laughs> I don't know what very he's cool. doing with it. But I hit him, uh, 
round one, and that was really, really difficult. And then I hit Justin near, uh-huh. and he got the first attack off. So Yikes, he, yeah. No, tough. I know. Justin played on stream round one, and he got to, like, five prizes taken, and he couldn't take his final prize because the list that he got <laughs> handed before the tournament was not playing a rescue stretcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's he what he was saying after. ran before. out so of that's, gas. That's right. I killed all his Natus and stuff. I'm like, no. And then he comes in with Lele GX to win. With no G- way. Guzma to Natu to win. Guzma like, to Natu. And then you had a Lele in there with, like, like four cards left. And he pulls out a Lele DC Guzma. Like, oh, my gosh. That is horrendous. So major, major yikes there. Unfortunate draws for Brady. That, I feel like, rarely and happens with Placephalon. So we're going to cut on over to our fourth and final round here at the Full Grip Game Shop Tournament here on a lovely Wednesday night. Thank you for joining us, everybody, and thank you for hanging out during the rounds. We are here for our final match. These two guys are both 2-1, going to be competing for a spot in top four where they can win some store credits uh, for the shop here, Full Grip and uh, also infinite bragging rights. So uh, both our both our three O's we had shown here on stream already. I know, uh, I guess, let's see, one of them, uh, it's gotta be Will. Yeah, we've already shown Will on stream, and then uh, I wonder who the other three O is now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, we've already shown Brady a couple times. We've already shown Will a couple times. So good to show some other rounds here so we can get a little bit of uh, some different flavor. Holden is a player, a regular here, who always brings the spice. Holden's uh, definitely a shoe in for some interesting deck building. So love checking out what Holden builds and brings to the table here uh, at Full Grip. And excited to have him on stream. I think this might be our first time having him on stream first time catching him here so stoked on that and then jesse parker a regular as well who we've shown off on camera here quite a few times they are shuffling up and drawing their hands so going to be getting started any second here for our fourth and final round and as i said before thank you so much Again, for joining us tonight, been an awesome stream so far. You guys rock. Uh, been a great time here. So, Oh, Wimpo Squirrel, exposing me out here. Yes, I am, uh, I am, uh, yes, the big 3-0, big 30. <laughs> I turned 30 a couple weeks ago. It's fine, all right, I lived. I'm on the other side, still out here, still grinding, still waking up and going to work, doing the same old thing, so... It's cool. Still playing Pokemon, you know? Not much has changed. Now I'm just a 30-year-old with a beard who plays Pokemon. You guys like my beard? Let me know. Let me know if I should keep it <laughs> or not. I'm uh, kind of perusing the final you know, tag team cards over here. You guys, this scene, the Squirtle from tag team is super cute, man. It's just like sleeping. Super cute Squirtle I'm checking out. Oh, I know, Cuddly Honey Badger. I know. All right, they are up and rocking here. I'm interested to see how Holden's uh, Lost March Zorark deck does tonight. I think that that's a very interesting deck. Haven't seen it. Uh, haven't seen a version quite like this yet. So, should be interesting to see how he fit everything. Obviously, Lost March does want a lot more draw power than it uh, usually has. So maybe Zorark can give. Lost March, that extra oomph that it needs in order to be a consistent deck. So definitely don't mind it. Also, Zeru's do jive super well with Professor Elm's Lecture. You know, Zorark decks love Professor Elm's Lecture. Lost March decks love Professor Elm's Lecture. So uh, lots, of, lots of synergy there between those cards. That is, uh, that's fantastic. Let me see, let's see, Lost March counters out there beneath the, uh, you know, beneath the GX counter, so all players are ready to go. Oh, this Psyduck, this Psyduck artwork is hilarious as well from uh, from the upcoming set. Ooh, we get an Articuno too. Obviously the, uh, ooh, that Geodude is super funny, a little Geodude, super funny looking card. I'm sure Natalie's excited. There is an Electrode as well. Natalie collects Electrodes. It's her favorite Pokemon, so 
I'm sure she will be very excited. I've never seen a knit ball electrode, so that is uh, that is very interesting. All right, players are going to be getting started here. We've got Holden on the right, looking like he'll be going first. Starts with a Zerua and a Professor Elm's Lecture. I was talking about this. This sounds perfect, honestly, for Holden. This is exactly what he wants, is to start Lecture. He got a Zerua out. If he can get a Zorark turn two, he can start just trading there and drawing through his deck and hopefully getting Pokemon into the Lost Zone. So very cool stuff. I think that, you know, starting the Zerua, interesting call there. Looks like he wants to maybe go in with Zorark early. I think that's probably his game plan is that he's just like attacking with Zorark's early game and then late game kind of just sweeping up with, uh, with Lost Marchers. So I like the jive that this deck has going on. It's very cool. Now, Jesse, we've heard, is playing a Glaceon deck. So that is interesting. You know, Jesse will be able to turn off Zoroark's trade ability as early as turn one, so long as he has a water energy in his hand. So he will be able to go in energy evolution there super quick, right off rip, and lock down Holden's trade ability. So I'm interested to see how these cards all interact together. Now Holden's hand, I'm not sure if it really has too much else outside of that original Elm. He's got a Trump Beak, so he'll be able to check the top card of Jesse's deck. He's also got a Lost Mixer and a Double Colorless, but not really much else. So looks like he's just going to pass just with that and just hope that he draws into something better. Jesse is going to get that Turn 1 Glaceon, though. The Turn 1 Glaceon, absolutely uh, phenomenal here against this uh, against this deck. I mean, just shutting off Holden's draw power engine. Turn one, super aggressive. So amazing stuff here from Jesse's side. He's got the Ditto Prism Star on his bench. That can evolve into whatever. And since we are seeing a Glaceon deck here, I think he said that this is the list that did well at... Uh, I think Natalie said it was the list that did well at the uh, most recent European tournament, which I would have to guess is uh, Harrogate Regional Championships. So I will check on Limitless real quick to see if there is a, a Glaceon deck here listed for standard format, you know, most recent Harrogate Championships. We'll, uh, we'll see if maybe I can take a look at... Yes, sure enough, Glaceon right here. All right, so... Let's see, can I pull up this list at all? I'm clicking on Glaceon. Let's see, we've got one deck variant. Is this, hmm, that does not look like a Glaceon deck. That looks like a, oh, 24th at the Harrogate Regional Championships. All right, let's uh, let's check that out. Uh, see the list. Just so I can see what we might be getting. Oh, there's like Greninjas in here. What? Okay, so now I'm interested. This is Glaceon Greninja, everybody. 24th place at the Harrogate Regional Championships. We see the Froakie there coming out from Jesse's side with the Great Ball. This list looks absolutely wild. It's got four EB, two Glaceon, one Froakie, well, two Froakies, three Frogadiers, two Greninja DX. I guess you could evolve the Ditto into a, into a Frogadier, so that's why it only plays two Froakie. Uh, plays Tapu Koko, I guess. I don't see a Tapu Koko in uh, in the Harrogate list, but it looks like Jesse is playing a Tapu Koko. So Holden uh, will lost Mixer or lost Blender away. Some cards here. He's got a Skip Bloom and is going to use Floral Path into the sky to go grab a Jump Luff to put it into play. But unless Holden was able to net a clutch card there off the top, then I don't Ooh, he did, he did clutch it. A uh, nice card there off the top. He's got a Cynthia. Beautiful. So Holden's going to Lost Mixer some things away, get two Pokemon into the Lost Zone. So he's got three there now with a double colorless. Not exactly what you want there. Um, not exactly what you want there from the Lost Mixer, but that's fine. going to drop the, the link to Limitless there, the list that I'm looking at here for the Glaceon deck there in the comments, so you guys can check that out there in the chat. Holden's gonna draw six cards. No problem, Honey Badger. 
and see what he's got here. He's got another skip loom, but honestly would like to find a Zoroark so that it doesn't have to ram. Uh, I think that would be ideal. Obviously, ramming here is not what Holden wants to do. It would be very bad. But I do love that this list plays four copies of Eevee and only two Glaceon. I think that is just super strong because the whole idea of the deck is to shut down Pokemon GX's abilities like turn one, right? So if you're going first, you shut down Tapu Lele. Very good. Very good against Zorark decks. Greninja has a huge amount of hit points. Very good. And also, this deck plays Zorark, I think. Uh, at least the list that I'm looking at plays Zorark as well. So you got that draw power in there too, and the snipe power. Just a very cool looking list. And they play Cyrus Prism Star. I mean, who doesn't like a list that plays Cyrus Prism Star? Very creative stuff here. I'll have to try this list out on the channel. In fact, uh, you know, I'm already here, so I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna export this to PTCGO uh, while I'm while I'm here streaming. To be honest, because uh, I need to know. All right, looks like ooh, Holden was able to get the jump luff into the active here and kind of crank out a hit with the jump luff. So sweet stuff there on Holden's part. Very cool. Uh, and get the Zerua out of the active, but that does mean that there are two double colorless down. So I do worry about the energy situation in Holden's deck. That jump luff should go down so long as um, so long as Jesse can find a double colorless energy in order to attack with, is it Frost Bullet, I think is the name of the attack? So long as Jesse can attack with Frost Bullet here, that is going to be a KO'd Jump Bluff. So uh, we'll have to see, does Jesse have it? He does have the double colorless energy. I see the DCE in his hand. So he's got it, but... He's contemplating his, his play here. He's thinking, like, do I play the DC? Where do I put my snipe? And you can see the synergy between Glaceon and Greninja is very strong here. Um, Jesse's going to be able to take a two-prize turn with Frostbolt. He could knock out the Natu and the Jump Luff in one turn. So that's incredible. And even though it's on a damaged, you know, uh, a damaged guy here, that doesn't really bother me at all. I think that that's, like totally fine. Taking two prizes is completely nuts. Like, yes, if Holden's able to find another grass, or if he's able to find a, uh, maybe a Zorark and a DCE and some other Pokemon, then he'll be able to knock out that Glaceon. And that Glaceon is kind of all Jesse has going on right now. We didn't see a draw supporter come down from Jesse, but nope, Holden's just got an Elm's Lecture. So it doesn't have a supporter himself, hasn't been able to find any Zoroarks yet. That is just super crushing there, so not what you want to see at all. Uh, but it's fine, you gotta take the hands that you have. So Holden's gonna play his lecture, thin his deck a little bit, and look for some other Pokemon to fill out onto his bench. Hopefully he's got a grass energy in hand. If he's got a grass energy in hand, he's gonna be able to take a knockout on this Glaceon, which will be absolutely huge here absolutely huge and take two prizes himself in order to catch right back up with jesse that would be really big i accidentally lost the chat here so i'm back back in the chat now i got the chat i had uh, clicked away there for a minute so we're back very good excellent excellent cool stuff all right so holden plays the lecture got the pokemon in his hand now he's trying to find his way forward. I think he's going to Lost Mixer some cards away. The Skip Loom and another Lecture to draw one. And it's a Timer Ball, which is cool. But uh, only if he has like his third DCE in his hand. Because he could go get a Zorark maybe or something. But I don't think that he's going to be able to do that. We'll see how the Timer Ball uh, buffs out here. He's going to flip two coins for each head. He's searched for an evolution card. He's got one and a second, maybe. And show us what it was. It's one. So he's got one. He's going to go grab a Zorark. But unfortunately, that Zorark cannot trade. So that is no bueno. Not with the Glaceon active. He is just going to be completely stalled out here. Just hoping that he can 
hoping that he can top deck out of this uh, really tough scenario that he's found himself in. So he'll retreat into the Zorak just because the Zorak, oh, he, does he have it? No, he doesn't have it. Okay. I was going to say, I thought I saw another DCE in there, but he doesn't have the DCE. He's just got a benched hop up, and that's it. He's got a pass. Oh, that is horrible. Holden is just at the whim of his top deck now, just hoping that he top decks into something. I, for sure, am going to be building this Glaceon deck and showing it off on camera here in the next couple of days. This deck looks like a blast to play. I don't know how I didn't see this thing before, but... This thing looks phenomenal and a ton of fun. I mean, look how much action we got going on. We got Zorks, we got Greninjas, we got Glaceons. We got like everybody out here doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And uh, and Acerola, oof, that is just devastating there. Um, you know, Holden's put some damage into play, but it looks like Jesse might just be able to run him off the table here. Uh, with the double colorless energy, yeah, he's going to be able to crack that uh, that Zorak there for 120 damage. He's got a Froakie and a Frogadier in play too, so he could potentially just kind of do some snipe trickery to that Zorark. Make some plays happen there. Uh, Holden will send some more Pokemon away to Lost Zone, so he's got like a ton of Pokemon in Lost Zone. It's actually like could be an ugly situation. I guess, if uh, if Holden were able to somehow pull off an attack on a GX this turn. I don't think that he'll be able to uh, with the Lost Marchers. It's just probably not in the cards, but he does have Tapu Lele now. So he can go get a supporter. And I guess like Acerola would be cool if he played it, but I highly doubt there's an Acerola in here. Yeah, he's just got to go for Cynthia. At this point, you know, he just needs to find some energy. He needs to find some yeah energy i mean ideally he finds like some pokemon to throw into the lost zone a switch and a grass and maybe like a choice band but there's no way that he's going to get all of that so we're looking like plan b plan c he's probably going to get a double colorless and just hit into the zorak that's like not where he wants to be we know that jesse's playing heal cards uh who knows if he gets another acerola then that's just like game Holden, I don't think, can take a one-hit KO on this thing this turn. There's, like, no way that's happening. So you just got to hope for the next best thing, which I think is just to hit it for some damage. But he is wasting a double colorless by doing that, which just feels really bad. You definitely just chuck these Trumbeaks into the Lost Zone. You go 8, 9, 10, get those down there. Uh, and then you're doing 200 damage with your Jump Bluffs, which is, like, pretty rad. Definitely don't mind it. And once you get those things down, then... You can, uh, then you could just like knock out Glaceons, knock out uh, Zoroarks, knock out uh, potentially Greninja GXs as well, all with your Jump Bluffs, which he has two of in play, which is very good. Timer Ball again, we got a Tails and another Tails, devastating. Whiff there on Holden's part. But it does have two, the two Zoroarks, so I think you just chuck the Trumbeaks. Uh, so he's going to try and, oh, he's just going to trade that one. I, I like that. Just trade that out of play and then I think he's going to he's looking for an ultra ball I don't really let's see he's going to trade the ultra ball he's got a grass uh, I don't really know if he plays switch or if he's looking for switch I think he's just got to hit this thing for some damage here and I don't know why he hasn't sent the trumbeak yet I assume that's just like kind of a guarantee like the trumbeak's going into the loss zone but that's okay let's see Really eyeing up his options here and trying to figure things out. I think that I think that he's just got a hit with the with the Zorark and the DCE though. I don't know that he has any other plays. He will go to nine Pokemon in the Lost Zone though, so he'll chuck that Trombeak there. Check, uh, take a look at that. Yes, send that Guzma to the Lost Zone. I'm always so excited when you get to hit a supporter card off of the Trombeak there. Um, and then he's got another one, so he's gonna go to ten Pokemon in the Lost Zone. Can he get another? Oh, and an Elm's Lecture. So double supporter hit off of the Trumbeak. Very cool. And then I think Colton's just trying to de decide if he wants to Lost Blender anything else into the Lost Zone. Oh, thank you so much for joining us, Tan Man. Appreciate it. Welcome to the party. Uh, hanging out here at Full Grip Games on a Wednesday. Uh, getting this stream action underway. So, Holden's checking out his discard pile as well as Jesse's just to make sure that he doesn't have any other options. 
but definitely just want to see that DCE come down onto the Zork. I think that's all he's got, really. He's got to go for it. Yeah, there's nothing else really going on. Oh, Tanish! Welcome, Tanish. Oh, I know who you are, Tanish. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, famous YouTube commenter on my, uh, on my videos. Tanish, everybody, from India. Yes, welcome, Tanish. So... Let's see, Jesse is going to go ahead and trade away the counter catcher in his hand. He is ahead, so he's not going to need that. Then he's going to evolve into Glaceon again and probably just take a knockout. Honestly, if Jesse just takes a knockout on the active Zork, he's only going to have two prizes remaining. I don't really see any way that Holden comes back from this. Uh, yes, he will be able to stream some like real nice one-hit knockouts, but I think with the snipe power of Greninja that Jesse should be able to overwhelm these things, especially with Glaceon on his side as well. He really just needs to get like a water energy onto the Glaceon this turn, and so long as he gets like a water energy onto Glaceon, then I don't think that there's really a way that he loses the game. So long as he just continues kind of trading for the rest of the game here, seeing more of his deck, drawing more of his cards, should be totally fine. So he evolves into Glaceon, he gets the Zorark out, shuffling up real good. That Zorark's going to come down onto the Zerua here. And I think even just the DCE on the Glaceon, that feels fine as well, because then, you know, Glaceon is a double attachment guy. So you kind of want to get that attachment down early. But I think, uh, yeah, Jesse's got a weird situation where he doesn't actually want to trade away any of the cards in his hand. That happens sometimes. And uh, he had to trade away the Frogadier there in order to continue seeing cards. And we do see just the DCE and like some other not too great stuff in his hand. He does have switch though. So he's going to switch into a fresh Zorark. Uh, I don't know how much I agree with that play. I think it might be a little bit greedy. Uh, I think personally, I like just knocking it out with the damage Zorark and then going DCE on the Glaceon because then you're going to be able to use your Greninja and your Frogadier to potentially take your final two prizes on these two jump bluffs here. So I think I would have personally gone for that, but that's just me. Uh, I think uh, that, you know, it's super safe play going for this. Uh, but Holden can take a knockout here uh, on this Zorark in one hit. So I don't really think that there is a point in doing that. I much would rather have seen the DCE on the Glaceon for sure, because then he could do the Frost Bullet and do whatever it is, like 90, 30, or right? Uh, and then put 30 onto the Jump Bluff, double ability knock out four prize or two prizes take the game holden will go in with mysterious treasure that's a card we don't see a lot of in uh lost march lists we'll get tapu lele here and go for a judge it's also a card we don't see a lot of in lost march lists so very cool stuff he's got the grass he's got the judge now holden has got 11 pokemon in the lost zone as well so jesse is gonna get punished here just super, super punished for attacking with the clean Zorark. This is why I was saying he definitely needed to just attack with the damaged one this turn because attacking with the clean one really doesn't do him any favors. Now he just got a damaged Zorark on the bench with a DCE on it and a clean one just biting the dust. So that's uh, that's fine, though. This is, uh, this is where we're at now. Holden's going to get four cards. Jesse's going to get four cards. Jesse does have a trade next turn as well. Looks like Jesse was able to draw into Rescue Stretcher, so that's good. Holden's got another Trumbeak for the Lost Zone, so 120 damage coming, or uh, not to 120, 240 damage coming down here from that Jump Bluff to knock out the Zorark GX in one clean hit. Now Jesse has got to figure out how does he get himself out of this situation without losing. All right, so that's uh, that is the question. He's got one trade to utilize, so he can draw two more cards here. He's going to trade away the Cyrus Prism Star, and not going to be using that. And he gets double water. So, like I was saying, if that DCE was on the Glaceon this turn, maybe you go hit the jump bluff 30 onto that thing, and then you try to win the game with just two abilities. Like, that's not a bad route. 
especially since he's got the rescue stretcher in his hand. He basically has it. He just would need one more piece in order to have won the game that way. But, you know, he's got the Frogadier in the discard pile. I know he's got that, so he's probably going to rescue stretcher that back. But not being able to attack with the Glacier on this turn, I, that could be a game-losing play. It just could be. Because if he can't get all the pieces together that he needs, Holden could just stream another one-hit knockout onto that Zorark, and he could take the knockout on that Zorark with a Zorark, which is horrible for him, right? So he's going to take that knockout with Zorark, and then Jesse is not going to have a lot of damage in play uh, in order to take a knockout uh, that he needs. So he may end up needing to take out seven prizes to win this game, which is just very bad, and I think it could have all been avoided. But Jesse's going to go in with the Frogadier here. I think he has to put it on the jump bluff. There's really no other way. He's got to put it on the bench jump bluff and hope that he kind of is able to buff out with that snipe there. So he sees it, puts it on the bench, and has to take this ugly knockout on a jump bluff with a damaged Zorak. Now, if Holden's able to find a double colorless energy, he is going to be right back in the driver's seat. I don't really mind his situation at all. I mean, yes, if Jesse's able to uh, find a Guzma, he can just win the game with a knockout on the Glaceon. Jesse's not out of this game yet, not by a long shot. If he could just find a Greninja GX, then he wins because he will just go... Um, he will just go and uh, and just use Greninja and Frost Bullet and knock out the the jump left on the bench for game. So he's got his outs. Like Jesse has his outs. He has two outs to win the game. It's either Greninja GX or Guzma. Either of those two cards wins him the game. However, if he doesn't have them, he has put himself in a situation where he could lose. And that is uh, that's not what you want to do. Not at all. So that's really, really tough to be in. Holden has an out here. It's not a great out, but he's got one. So Holden's going to check his deck real quick and probably just proceed to trade. I know he needs to see a double colorless energy. He cannot attack with this jump bluff this turn. He needs to save that for later. So he's got a trade, and I think he's got to save the net too as well because he needs a benched Pokemon. So he can't Guzma the he can't Guzma the Glaceon. He needs a DCE, but I know he's down a lot of DCEs. So he's got to get rid of I think is it two grass? No, it's just grass, Guzma, Natu, and something else. So I think he's got to just trade away the Guzma. I think he has to keep the Natu. Uh, I think he has to keep the grass. Those are both like. Very important parts of him winning this game. But he trades away the Natu to see two cards. And he does not get a DCE. He's just got Cynthia. That's fine, though, because he can Cynthia potentially into a DCE so long as it's in the deck. So that's probably fine. I think he probably just has to. He's only got a few cards left in deck, really. So he'll timer ball. Let's take a look at that deck. Hopefully he gets to search the deck so I can see if there is a double colorless energy left in the deck. But no, it's double tails. Oh, what an ugly card. Oh, and he is attaching the grass. That's conceding defeat. Oh, just by taking this knockout, you're just saying, all right, Jesse, if you've got an energy, you win the game. Jesse's got the energy. We already know this. So that is just so tough here. That or Holden promotes the Zorark. I don't think he can promote the Zorark either. You can't give Jesse another turn here. Really, really tough beats here for Holden. It's just going to take the knockout. Jesse promotes the Glaceon Hurley. He's got the double colorless, shows the double colorless, and he's got game there. So really tough stuff there for Holden coming down the wire. Jesse able to hang on to that one. Close game. Good game. Well played by both players. Excellent stuff there from the Full Grip Games Tournament. I'm excited to hear who ended up winning our event. So, going to ask and see if Natalie will bring me back the winner so that we can have a little chat there about uh, their tournament experience. Jesse is going to move on then to be 3-1, and we'll probably get like second or top four at the Full Grip Games tournament here. And then it's either going to be like Will or maybe somebody else as the 4-0 winner of our Wednesday Night Shop Tournament. So excited to see who won. 
Uh, in the meantime, I guess I could uh, I could bring up some you know some team up scans. Talk about that a little bit. Not exactly sure how close those guys are to wrapping up their tournament there. So Natalie, I see you in the chat. Natalie, who won? The whole tournament. Oh, did Jesse win? Oh, okay, Will. Bring Will back here. All right. So Will is the winner of the Full Grip Game Shop tournament with Buzzwall Garbador. Was able to go 4-0 today. So I'm going to ask for Will to come back and talk about his sweet victory here on stream for us before we head out but thank you so much to everybody for hanging out with us tonight it's been a blast i've enjoyed it uh very much so thank you to all the subs thank you for all the bits thank you to everybody who's checked out the teespring the brand new teespring that i got up and rolling there with the tricky gym t-shirts super stoked on those as well and will man though what do I want? I want to talk to the winner. Wow. I was watching a very intense match. It looks like you oh, have a... Uh... Here, just get this thing out of here. Okay. <laughs> it looks like you... Uh... Well, you're certainly done with all the uh, the losing that you did this weekend. Oh, yeah, for sure. So that's good. <laughs> it must feel nice to get some wins back under your belt. Mm -hmm. and make sure you didn't quite forget how to win there. <laughs> Only four, though, not eight. I supposed to redeem myself. Yeah, so still good. I mean, so now if you take your last, like... You know what? Seventy-six hours into you know, you know, you're like uh, or like seventy-four four, hours. Four and eleven. Maybe. You're like four and twelve. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. It's cool. You're climbing your way back up. You know, life, life. You know, you'll you'll even out eventually. You uh, know? Yeah, maybe. You're gonna be fine. So, what happened in your final match? Who'd you play against? How'd it go? Played against Orlando, playing Lost March. Okay, so you got paired down. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. And, and there are no other undefeated. So. Ah, it was just you. So, how did that uh, how that matchup go against Orlando? Um, I went. I went up through prizes, and he can't win. So. Ah, right. So <laughs> like you just kind of got out the gates quick, and just were totally fine. I got turn beast as always. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, I did see your your turn one beast action there. Yes, we I were... also judged him turn one, but he got ah. but he got an elm, so it was it was, it was fine. Okay, <laughs> so yes, very strong plays there, Will. So. Uh, have you looked forward to cards from the new set at all? No. No idea? I mean, I don't even know if you have any cards from this set. Yeah, so I have Ditto. You have Ditto? Oh, you got Ditto, huh? I have Blacephalon. And you have a couple of Blacephalon, right? Poiple and not gonna Dell. All right, so you did pick up some things. So, uh, I, for one, am very excited about Team Up. Are you gonna be traveling to any tournaments anytime soon, you think? Like St. regionals or? Just probably to St. Louis. St. Louis is our next one. Yeah, I think we're all going to St. Louis here. So, Will, congrats again. Thanks. Yes, I look forward to seeing you next week. I think we got a league challenge here next week, uh -huh. right? I can't, probably can't show up next week. Ah, what about Key Forge tomorrow? Oh, I can't, I can't, Will. I can't justify driving to Akron two, two days in a row. What do you mean? Oh, I, I have to work tomorrow, too. You got your job. Your job pays for the hobby. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well. Well, it was a pleasure having you tonight, Will. Appreciate you showing up. Congrats on the win. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your store credit. You know what you're going to spend it on? I don't know how much, I, how much I'm getting. So. You're probably getting like 30 bucks, if I had to guess. Oh, there's, 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 more, there's more people than that. It's fine. Yeah, so I don't know. Or you might, I don't, I might get more. I don't know. So Probably Keyforge decks. Keyforge decks, yes. All right. Of course, well, Sean doesn't have any of the cards I need. So. Well, you know. <laughs> Anyways. Thank you so much for joining us, Will. Congrats on your win. And thank you so much to everybody who hung out in the stream tonight. It was a great time. Special shout out to the new subs tonight. Thank you for joining the squad. Make sure to check out the sub exclusive Discord channel. Appreciate the love and support, y'all. Uh, thank you guys so much for the bits donations as well. Idiots are us. Top of the board tonight. Carl Barone and Fire Flame there on the the old bit game there. Thank you guys for the bit donations. Appreciate that. And then also shout out to everybody who has purchased a uh, tricky gym shirt through the new Teespring that I got launched and loaded there. So. 
excited about the t-shirts. Gonna be designing some more soon as well, but I love the ones that I got up there already. Uh, I definitely am trying to get myself the super stoked, uh, you know, sweatshirt that looks like really, really dope. But y'all rock, y'all are great. Thank you for the love and support as always. And I think I'm going to, be, I'm gonna need to make a schedule. I like a stream schedule. So, you know, Matt, uh, Price, and Natalie have been bugging me to do that because that's what good streamers do. And I'm trying to be one of those. So, gonna be creating a stream schedule here. I'm gonna go ahead and just pin it down and say that I will stream this weekend sometime. So probably Friday and Saturday, like Friday or Saturday, maybe Friday and Saturday. I will be doing some streams this weekend. And then also make sure to look out for the Team Up uh, Top 10, which I'll be releasing probably sometime next week, okay? Tanish, my next stream will be, we'll do Friday. I'll, I'll stream on Friday. So we'll do Friday, probably Friday night um, sometime. I'll do some stream action Friday night. I might even stream Friday morning. I don't know. So we might do a morning stream sometime Friday, and then I will get a stream in Saturday or Sunday. I'll tweet about it, so make sure to follow me on Twitter. You follow me on Twitter. Or just, you know, if you follow the, you know, follow the channel, then uh, you should get some notifications. But anyways, uh, I will also work on a stream schedule. That is my 2019 goal is to get a schedule together. I think it's probably going to end up being something like Monday, Wednesday, Friday will be like my stream schedule where I'm streaming Monday nights, Wednesday nights, and Friday mornings. That's probably going to be my stream schedule here. And those are all Eastern Standard Time, uh, you know, things. So probably like seven o'clock Wednesday, uh, you know, seven o'clock p.m. Monday, and like 10 a.m. Friday mornings. That will probably be it. That's what I'm gonna say. Like that's probably like, probably my jam, all right? And then I'm just gonna throw in like random Saturday streams like when I can. But I won't like commit to like every Saturday because I do things on the weekend like uh, go to tournaments. So anyways, y'all rock. Have an excellent Wednesday night. Peace.